Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for another installation on my non-alcoholic review series. For today's video, I'm delving into the world of non-alcoholic wines, or should I say, de-alcoholized wines. So I originally had this planned as one video encompassing everything from non-alcoholic sparkling wines, rosés, still whites, and still reds, but it ended up being a lot longer than I thought, and I didn't want to bog you all down with an hour-long video of tasting. So this is going to be my first installment focusing solely on non-alcoholic sparkling wines, which honestly are the best non-alcoholic wines. What makes them better is the simple fact of the bubbles, which add back texture to the wine that non-alcoholic alternatives typically lack. The carbonation makes them taste pretty close to their alcoholic counterparts. We'll start with the sparkling white wines, featuring some brands you may have already seen on this channel before, and then we'll move on to the sparkling rosés. If you like this sort of video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button below. I have a lot more non-alcoholic related content as well. I'll start with this one from Shirley Wines. This is their sparkling white. It's made with uh, California grapes and also some pear juice. The first thing you want to do when you're tasting wine is usually you would have a white background here, could just be a piece of paper or something, and you just tilt the glass over it and you take in the clarity, the hue, and then also for sparkling wine, the bubble structure. The color for this to me is a pale yellow. It's completely clear and it has what seem to be fine bubbles, they seem to have dissipated really quickly when I poured it into the glass. The next part of tasting is taking the aroma, or what it's often referred to as the nose. I was actually taught when you're tasting wine that you should smell the wine with your mouth just open a little bit. There's olfactory receptors in your mouth as well as your nose. So I'm getting a lot of orchard fruit, some honey, definitely some lemon. Now I'm going to go in for the taste. Mm. It's really nice. I was taught to always taste the wine three times to really get a sense of the wine. You'll also want to let it sit in your mouth for a little while. This helps it warm up and it also coats all of the taste buds in your mouth so you're not missing anything. So I'm definitely getting a lot of citrus fruit, really, really nice acidity. I'm getting that um, orchard fruit in there, which must be from the pear juice. Really tasty, actually very dry. I don't really sense much residual sugar, if any. Really nice, definitely a great aperitif. When I'm saying dry or off dry, I'm referring to the amount of sugar that's perceptible in the wine. So something that's off dry will taste much sweeter than something that's completely dry. Next up is Naughty's Sparkling Chardonnay. So what's interesting about this wine, um, I've actually used this before in my non-alcoholic French 75 in a video I did for my non-alcoholic spirits review that I will link below. Um, is that I've never seen this on a, on a wine label before, but it's actually halal certified. So many of them are vegan. Um, the only reason wine wouldn't be vegan is because of the fining agents that they use. Um, one of them is called uh, chitosin, and it's usually made from the exoskeletons of shrimp, from shrimp shells, which is kind of interesting. They do make a, a vegan version of chitosin as well. Um, so already I can tell a huge color difference between the Shirley and the Naughty. This is definitely like it's almost clear. It's a very pale straw color. Um, it has retained quite a bit more foam. The bubbles look a little bit finer. The bubble size really contributes to the mouthfeel. Um, a larger bubble is something that's more associated with Prosecco, while Champagne tends to have a nice finer bubble structure. So this smells like a sparkling Chardonnay, that's for sure. Like green apple, citrus, it's a slight minerality to it, like slate or chalk maybe. And it's absolutely delicious. This is really, really good. Definitely get green apple, I'd definitely say lemon. Sensing a little bit of pineapple. Really, really, really tasty. I, I do really, really like their product. I think it's probably one of the best on the market. Last but not least in this category of white sparkling wine is the Lights Einswein Zero. This is a sparkling Riesling. 
It comes in this uh, convenient little single serving can or they actually sell it in a 750 milliliter bottle as well. So similar color to the Naughty Brute. Also small bubbles, but they did seem to dissipate pretty quickly. This is definitely a Riesling. You, de you get the petrol, honeyed kind of notes. Wow, it's really good. What really helps the non-alcoholic sparkling wines taste a little more realistic is the fact that they do have some type of carbonation. When, you, when you're removing the alcohol from wine, you're removing not just the alcohol, but you're removing a lot of the texture. So this kind of like adding the carbonation or having carbonation definitely um, aids in that whole mouthfeel. The bubbles went flat pretty quickly, but the wine is delicious very dry, um, really, really nice acidity, definitely hitting all of those, um, those Riesling notes, like pear and honey, and just really, really tasty, very aromatic. So of the three that I've tasted, I have to say that the Thompson & Scott Naughty uh, Sparkling Brute is my favorite in this category. It, tastes the most realistic to me. Um, I really don't feel like I'm missing out on anything as far as like if I were to, you know, be drinking a glass of champagne. Well, maybe if I was drinking a glass of champagne, I would know the difference. But um, I think that this is a great, great alternative to an alcoholic Chardonnay. And it's very, very difficult to, uh, to taste the difference in my opinion. So if you're having any type of celebration, um, you know, a baby shower or anything like that where people can't drink or aren't going to be drinking, I think that this is a really great option to have. So this next category is definitely my favorite. Um, although cocktails are my passion, I am more of a wine drinker in real life. So this is usually my go-to, a sparkling rosé. I'm very excited for this category. I'm going to start with this Null Sparkling Rosé from Studio Null. All of these are also from Germany, so that's a little something interesting, I thought. This is super, super pale pink, very, very light blush. It's got nice bubbles, nice little tiny bubbles. It's pretty shy on the nose. I really don't get too much. Little floral, um, maybe unripe strawberry. Hmm, that's really tasty. Tastes like a sparkling rosé. It's um, it's not super fruity. I would say it's definitely more um, on the floral side. Really, really nice acidity. Um, if you've ever had a a pine berry. Um, it's like a cross between a strawberry and a pineapple, it, but they're like a little, it's not quite as flavorful as you would, ma would imagine. That's kind of what this tastes like to me. Um, like an unripe red berry, if that makes sense. But I really like it. I love like very acidic things, so it's my cup of tea. Yeah, this is really, really tasty. Very, um, not what I was expecting at all. I feel like most of these are tend to be on the fruitier side, but this is very floral and nuanced, very nicely balanced. Next up is the Thompson & Scott Naughty Sparkling Rosé. So just looking at it, it's definitely uh, has a little more of a pinkish hue than the Null, although it is still very light, like a very light blush slash coral. Um, it has nice fine bubbles. It smells a lot fruitier. That classic kind of red fruit of a rosé, rose hips. If I didn't know any better, I would think that I was actually smelling a real rosé. Definitely much fruitier than the Null. Really tasty. Um, there's a bit of weight on it. There's definitely some residual sugar in here. It is a bit sweeter um, than the other sparklings that I've tried so far, but it's really nice. It's not like out of place or like 
cloyingly sweet or anything like that. It's just like a nice, just kind of like break, like bumps up the flavor of the fruit a bit. So definitely strawberry, raspberry, really nice acidity. Man, this is gonna be a hard category because this is really good as well. Next up is Chateau Delish. What I found very interesting about this bottle is that this entire bottle is two servings per container. I just think that that's kind of crazy. Um, all of the other ones are about five. I think they are each five servings per, per container. So color is very similar to that of the Naughty. Um, I would say slightly darker, just, just a tinge darker, a little bit more coral colored. Looks like nice little bubbles, so a little bit bigger than the Naughty. Getting some honey, some red fruit, some tropical fruit in there too. That's really good. This also has a little bit of residual sugar. Um, I think I would actually put this in an off dry category. I mean, it's still, it's not sweet, but there's definitely a little more um, residual sugar than the others. Wow, so good, so juicy. Juicy red fruit, the classic, classic rosé profile. Definitely very, very raspberry forward. Like this tastes just like delicious, sparkling raspberry wine. I don't know, it's awesome. I love it. And last up in this category is the Eins Y Zero Sparkling Rosé. Um, so I actually, when I was doing research on them, I believe they are the ones who pioneered the technology for making dealcoholized wines. They actually make alcoholic wines as well. They're very well known. So this is the darkest color of them all, I think. Still very pale, very pale, pinkish, coralish hue. Uh, the bubbles dissipated pretty quickly, but I'm also, you know, I'm not going to hold that against them because th I feel like it's harder for the cans to hold the bubbles as long. Ooh, this has really, really high acidity. I would say it's probably, it's definitely less sweet than the Naughty and the um, Chateau Delish. It's like, it's not totally dry, but it is pretty dry. Um, there's like a lot of, um, it's pretty floral actually. There's a lot of, I, I don't know exactly what grape it's made with, but it's really great. It's very citrusy. Um, you're still getting the red fruit. You're still getting um, some rose in there. This is gonna be so hard to choose because I really honestly would drink any of these wines. They're so good. If I had to choose one, I would probably go with the Studio Null just because it tastes the most wine-like. It's very dry. When I'm drinking this, I really don't notice that I'm not drinking an alcoholic wine. Like the others are a little fruitier. Not that it tastes like soda or anything like that. It, de it definitely still tastes like wine, but I prefer more of like old world style, like very dry. Um, very citrusy, very high acidity style wines. So this one would be my favorite for this category. Very, very slim margin, but this one would be my favorite. That wraps up this non-alcoholic sparkling wine review. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for the next installments, focusing on non-alcoholic white wines, which will be followed up with non-alcoholic red wines, the trickiest category of them all. I hope you found this video helpful. I really like having this growing community of people who appreciate and enjoy non-alcoholic options. So please share your favorites below if I haven't covered them on this channel just yet so that others can learn about them. Thank you so much for stopping by. See you all again soon with the next review. Cheers!